Good afternoon, and welcome to More Meets the Eye. I'm your host, Blind Prime, and for today, we will be talking about G.I. Joe Classified Clutch. Not the vamp, just the clutch. So, we're going to pull him out of the vamp real quick. I've got Cream the Cat over here hanging out in his special little spot. So, let's get him out. Clutch here has actually been a pretty cool figure. And I do enjoy how he fits in here. And I have um, Rock and Roll doing the devil horns over here beside him. Pretty cool. I like that Rock and Roll came with that. All right, did your hand come out of your gear shift? There you go. Let's pull the clutch out. Come on. No. Pull the clutch out. Come on. Get, get. Come on. Get, get. You got it. You got it. There you go. That's a good clutch. Yeah, there you are. There you are. He's got some long legs. Okay. Here comes Clutch. Let's pull up the leg there and there. Okay, first off, let's do a little size comparison of him next to the vamp. Just to kind of get you the idea of what's going on with Clutch here size-wise. And uh, he does do a few things that I appreciate and I'm going to talk about in this video. We'll see. When you stand him up right next to the vamp, the top of his head is almost level with the top of the floodlights. He's just a little, uh, let's say just a smidge, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, just, just a smidge. Just a smidge under the edge of those lights. It's pretty good. I do like how this vehicle's uh, dimensions work, and I appreciate how, you know, you've got a clutch here. He looks pretty good. You can have him just kind of hanging out over here, preparing some lights and stuff. But let's go ahead and move this vamp out of the way. Clutch, can you please... And straighten your legs out. There you go, buddy. And you can sit right there in front of the stage as I make sure the area I want to put the vamp doesn't have anything in it, like a cat. And here comes the vamp. There we go. Set it over there. Now, let's get Clutch over here and uh, talk about him and his accessories. He comes with just, just a few. I mean, you can count the vamp as an accessory. The, uh, the shotgun here, I'm not sure if this is Clutch's shotgun or if this is General Hawk's shotgun, but the mold is the same. And um, I do like the fact that the shotgun mold has a, a little tab there. Uh, that little tab you can put on things. I don't know if Clutch here has anything that that little tab could fit into, but uh, there is that little tab. Maybe on his back? Eh. It, the tab is too small, but it's made for those little holes that you occasionally get in places. And there's just... doesn't seem like we got any of those on clutch. I don't, I don't think he has one of those. But it's still a nice shotgun. And uh, clutch holds it very well. Getting it in his hand isn't too bad, especially since his hands are a little stretched out from the uh, from holding the wheel and the gear shift. But surprisingly, you know, he's been holding those things for a while. And his hands, it seems like they are made pretty spot on those the uh, the steering wheel there and the gear shift because his hands haven't stretched out as much as I thought they would would they would in the uh, weeks since I got him he put his shotgun in his hand and you know, we didn't get the trigger finger in there there we go hey get your trigger finger in there that's up pretty good it's a pretty good fit I didn't get the trigger finger in there um, yeah you always got to get that trigger finger into the hand or else it's just never going to work out well. And there we go. Let's get that together. There we are. And then pull that around. Come on, get in there. There we go. Hey, hey, no, no. Like you're breaking your finger. I don't want you to break your finger. Whatever. He's got good trigger discipline. His finger is not sitting on the trigger. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's him holding the shotgun. The shotgun here, the mold is pretty good. We talked about it in the General Hawk video. I really do like how this thing feels. I don't like how rubbery the plastic is, but apparently, according to the people at G.I. Joe Classified, that's going to be getting fixed real soon, and we're going to never see these again. Uh, they're going to change it up a bit and try to get things uh, switched around, which is pretty cool. I do appreciate that, but his gun is pretty neat. It's a nice little shotgun. We stand the shotgun up on its stock and it sits the tip of its barrel goes to the very top of the um the strapped on compartment stuff on his hip especially this wrench we're going to talk about that wrench 
but that is the shotgun it's a pretty good shotgun in my opinion now the other accessory he comes with that's really cool is this spare helmet and this is what I wanted to see with Grunt, and we didn't get that with Grunt. And instead, we just got a separate head that we could switch out with Grunt. But instead of a separate head, they decided to give us a helmet so that he could join the Steel Corps. Boom. And it comes on very well. Very nice helmet. I like it. Apparently, he's got some, um, some paint on it. It gives it a, a, a grinning face or something like that, like a you know, shark mouth. Which is really cool, and because uh, you know, if the um, if the dragonfly has such a paint job on the front of it, I'm going to just switch this helmet out with uh, with the person flying the dragonfly, eh, or the gunner of the dragonfly, whoever it may be, because I, I think that would just be funny to have that steel core helmet with the cool you know, mouth. Now the helmet itself, we'll talk about that real quick, isn't too bad. The steel core helmet, it's got all these just rivets cut into it. Really nice. I really like them. I think it's got some really nice feel to it. It's a, you feel the uh, visor going on in there with a heads up display, I assume, on the inside. A little antenna on the side so he can communicate with Breaker and headquarters and anybody else in the field. And um, I really appreciate the fact that he gets that. You know, I did like the fact that rock and roll got a a, a walkie-talkie so we'll talk about that when i talk about rock and roll we're probably going to talk about him next week but that's the steel core helmet it's really it's a little bulky definitely bulky it's wider than normal helmets but it, it's supposed to be kind of a heavy armored helmet that's very futuristic so i like i like the bulkiness of the steel core helmet it makes it feel more legit yeah knocking things over here at blind prime so let's come over here to the to his other helmet first his other helmet is something that we've experienced before where did i put it there it is let's stand up straight now there you go now this other helmet here is very similar to the helmet that we got with um david casanova or uh, bazooka and also the helmet that we got with the heavy artillery roadblock very similar and i think it's a nice helmet i do like this helmet design more than the steel core design i think it's just more fun so it's nice to have that also as part of this and it fits on his head a little loose but then again you know it's, it's okay you know now if you didn't know this apparently and i learned this uh clutch here is i keep forgetting his real name and i'm sorry about that um plenty of people will tell you all sorts of things about clutch but what i found the most interesting he's apparently e4 and anybody military wise or at least reads a lot of you know military stuff i i mean i read a lot of military fiction and non-fiction and um in there you know the e4 is also nicknamed the e4 mafia and it just makes the explanation on how clutch can be like he is you know he does all these things that, you know, he's a womanizer and he definitely talks back. It, it's, it's like, what in the world? You know, how, how do you still do your job? Well, he's part of the E4 Mafia. The paperwork gets lost. Nobody can ever fire Clutch because, you know, the, the paperwork always gets lost between point A and point B or something like that. Uh, so that was just something neat that I thought of with, with Clutch. I was like, oh, E4, that's pretty funny. Um, now, moving on to Clutch here in himself. Well, first off, we have a pistol here we got to talk about and a wrench. So let's get the wrench out first. Here we go. Pulling the wrench out. This wrench is pretty neat. Come on, come on. It's really in there. It's part, it becomes part of his tool chest here or his tool belt. Come on. This wrench is just not having it. Come on, wrench. There it goes. Okay, so in his tool belt, he's got a little tactical flashlight, a uh, tack light that he can use when, like, going underneath the car or something. And in the front there, he's got some sort of meter, I assume. Maybe. Maybe a meter or something like that. And that's pretty neat. The, um, the real fun is this, uh, this really cool wrench. It's not a bad wrench at all. It seems to be just a regular wrench. It doesn't, doesn't feel like it has the... Let me stop recording. Let me just go straight there. 
All right, it doesn't have any sort of adjustment on it, but it's a nice little wrench. It stands, let's see, from the uh, tip of the wrench to the, yeah, the top of it on the ground is about the same height as his boot. Not a very, well, not a very big wrench, but then again, you know, wrenches aren't really supposed to be huge. So this wrench works out pretty well. And uh, if I can stop fiddling with the figures, I can there. There we go. Let me go ahead and get that in here. Yeah. He can hold the wrench quite well. I think it's pretty neat. So we'll set the wrench off. We'll actually put the wrench back here because it's one of those small parts that I worry about losing. And we're just going to slip it back in there. And I appreciate that it's hard to get out. That is a really nice thing about the wrench. And it's not going to fall out on you randomly. Uh, now his pistol is on his chest, like with General Hawk. And his pistol here is... Uh, not too bad, not too bad. It's still a rubbery item, but it's got a nice grip texture to it, and the pistol itself has got some nice uh, feeling, you know, textures. It was molded quite well. Uh, so we're gonna put that back. I think it's like a nine millimeter or something. I don't, I don't know, I don't know guns. Uh, I always thought it was best, you know, me, me not having vision and me not handle guns. Oh, better, better for those around me. Anyway. Let's come over here and talk about the figure himself. He's actually pretty cool. So we got some uh, some greased hair going on here. It's been greased with motor oil, apparently, from what they say. It's slicked over. He must have a bald spot he's trying to hide. And then on the side, it's kind of shaved down a bit. It's a, it's a weird hairdo, that's for sure. He's got some bushy eyebrows there. And then he's got uh, some eyebrows, not bad. And in here, we can feel those deep set eyes. Not too shabby with the eyes. Pretty good. It's got a bit of a rounded face. His, his cheeks are a bit more rounded. And pretty neat. And uh, though there is there's hint of some strong cheekbone there. We come down here to the mouth. Not, not a bad mouth. There seems to be some stubble or something on his chin. Maybe he's got a little chin beard. Seems like it goes up on the sides too. So I don't think he shaves every day. Uh, I'm getting the rough texture of somebody who has a five o'clock shadow or something like that, or just like me and just has a has a bit of beard. You know, maybe he got it qualified. Is it an underbeard? Oh, it does actually go under his his chin. That's pretty cool. He actually sculpted that in. That's pretty neat. Uh, now coming down here from his head, we uh, will spin it around to the back and take a look at his buzz cut back of his head. He keeps that area clean. Um, that's mainly because this guy's got a you know on his back going back and forth in muddy environments and stuff and if that hair's long it's just going to drag in the ground and then it's going to get underneath you and it's going to get into the wheels of your little little you know dolly or skateboard that you're using to, to, to slide under the vehicle uh, it's just long hair on the back of the head for somebody who works in mechanic it's it just it's going to be a bad time so it makes sense this guy cut his hair uh, coming down here we've got the his uh, vest not a bad vest. Uh, you've seen vests like this before on uh, G.I. Joe. There's there's a bit going on on the back. It feels a bit, again, just slightly different. This doesn't seem to be as cluttered of a vest as we've seen in the past. It's pretty cool. And then on the front of the vest, we have the holster on the uh, left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, it seems like he has a pocket or something like that that's into the vest. It seems to be something's in there. Maybe some sort of tool that he uses or a spare clip for the pistol on his other chest, you know, on his other side. So, I mean, down here, nice belt. Cool belt action going on there. He's got a little pocket on his belt. He's got another pocket on the other side. And uh, come around here, he's got a pocket over one of his butt cheeks. Nice belt for a mechanic to have. Lots of places to keep little parts and little meters. Then you, we explain the utility a belt on his thigh. It's a utility thigh holster. Pretty neat. Pretty cool. And uh, talking more on the sculpt wise, we've got uh, his groin area sculpted pretty decently. Come around here to his butt. How's his butt look? Yeah, his butt's all right. He's got uh, got some some padding there. Feels like they actually sculpted in some pockets for yeah. Feels like they actually may actually be blue jeans. That's pretty neat. You can actually feel the crease there where the, uh, the two sides of the fabric meet, because every pair of pants has that crease going down the middle of the back. And that's pretty cool. They actually did that. That's really neat. 
Um, so before we go further down the legs, let's talk about the arms. And the arms here, he has some really nice muscle tone. He's got what feels like uh, rolled up sleeves going on there. And they did the roll up right at the point where this uh, bicep swivels. So just below it, so the, uh, the swiveling bicep does not interfere with any of the look of the figure. And uh, that's really nice. The coming down, we've got some really nice muscle tone here. And his lower arm, you know, just more muscle tone, really. They always do a very good job with that sculpting. There's some sort of divot right there. What is up with that? That's odd. Oh, that's just part of the, uh, the, the hinge. Okay, so there's double jointed elbows. He doesn't have an elbow, um, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't have an elbow brace. Or an elbow pad, I should say. No elbow pad there. Do you? Wait, do you have double jointed elbows? Yeah, you obviously do, because you wouldn't be able to get that actual thing. So, coming down here to the hands. Decent hands, there's more just forearm. It feels like he's got some sort of belt or some uh, yeah, watch on his left wrist. It uh, doesn't seem to want to move or go anywhere, but it's just right there. And then his hands, which are just decent G.I. Joe classified figure hands. So let's come down here to the legs. We've got more of this pants, wrinkles all over the place. This guy is just filled with wrinkles. It's obvious, you know, he does not iron his, his, his clothes. He doesn't really fold them up well. Well, there's a reason. He hasn't gone beyond E4. Uh, coming over here to the knees, got some decent knee pads going on here. Uh, he's, uh, his knee pads are pretty excellent. And I love the feel of them. They're just great. Now we come down here to the legs. We've got the pants that are just pooped up and kind of bunched up at the top. Uh, right above the boots. And I love that they do this with the figures. I hate it whenever figures have a... Uh, you know, a twist in the ankle, the ankle swivel allows it to go 360, and, but that cuts through some muscle or something, and it just looks weird when you have the foot tilted sideways. But this one, you can tilt his foot sideways, and it's just the boot that's tilted sideways. It's very well done, and the boot is really nice. They have always made some really great boots. I like how this one has all these laces going all the way up it. Really cool. Coming down here to the bottom, we get my one you know, small negative, they didn't really sculpt the bottom of the shoe again. And I don't like it when they don't do that. Like, come on, you, you can put a little stuff down. It feels like there is some roughness, but, um, you know, I like it when they do a bit more. Anyway, so that's him in texture-wise. Uh, Articulation-wise, he's got everything that we've come to expect from G.I. Joe Classified. Uh, he's uh, even got some backwards butterfly going on, which is new. And that's it, though, for... Um, for really new sculpts, uh, not new sculpts, uh, new hinges and stuff like that. So let's end the video by doing a size comparison with him in the G.I. Joe Classified series. Bat, where are you at? Bat, 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 bat. Where'd it go? Bat was there, but he's there no more. Oh, here he is. He, he kind of fell a bit. Okay, now back to Bat here. Our good old friend. He's been with us for a while. He had to give up his belt because he's no longer the best figure of the year. It's no longer 2022. Now come over here. The bat is still taller. Let's make sure those drop down hinges are dropped down or dropped up and stand up to attention, both of you. Thank you. There we go. And yeah, no, the bat is just barely taller than Clutch here. And Clutch's shoulders are actually just a little shorter than the bat's shoulders. So the bat still has some height on him every Every which way. Leg-wise, eh, actually leg-wise, they're about the same. So I think the bat's torso is just longer. Anyway, that is Clutch from the G.I. Joe Classified Series Vamp number 112. An excellent figure overall. I have enjoyed it. And uh, I think that if you are really into G.I. Joe Classified, then not only is the Vamp a good vehicle, but the figure is top-notch. And... When you consider those two things, I'd say, you know, the Vamp's uh, a vehicle worth about um, $75, $80 at the end of the day. It's really good. Uh, not worth the 100 but then you include him. You, you include this figure, Clutch, and, and it really makes it. He's, he's not one of the lesser Joes. And actually, you know, before I let out, I almost forgot to test his core. Because we never really... Yeah, it's hidden by that, but that is a 
There we go. Yeah, he's got the good he's got the good core for G.I. Joe Classified series. And I, I just I do like Clutch. I like Clutch a lot, and I appreciate that Clutch was part of this deal. I'm not upset with this figure at all. And I definitely, you know, give Clutch and the Vamp two thumbs up. Thank you all so much for watching, and please tune into my channel, Blind Underscore Prime, where I raise awareness for the blind and the visually impaired through alternative means and methods. If you want to help me, you know, reach more blind people out there and reach more individuals who, you know, want to know more about the visually impaired and the blind and how they live their day-to-day -day lives, then please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Comment below and let me know what have you thought of all the vamp stuff so far. I'm pretty sure if you're into toys at all, then somebody's hit you with a vamp review. Until next time, bye-bye for now.